Welcome to CCRPG, where we open our virtual table and play games with some good friends. I'm Bob, and I'll be running Lancer. I'm joined today by Todd, portraying Astro Jammin. Hey there. Chuck, portraying Evelyn Bolick. Hey. Jeremy, portraying Dine Starseeker. Hello. And Jay, portraying Steve Starling. Hello. Ooh, sexy hello. Like is that, that what that very was? Sen- <laughs> it's very sensual. <laughs> sensual, at least. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Last time, we saw the DBC crew emerge from the LIT clinic. Whilst chasing the trail of Oath Rebels through the clinic, the pilots found evidence of LIT's secrets, something called Operation Nucleus, the bloody trail of Doc Grocer's carnage, and the connection between something called a segmentation tether and a place labeled 70.106. Making the prudent choice of leaving with what they had gathered, they made it all the way outside before they were stopped by Doc Grocer. Having retracted themselves back into their less conspicuous form, Doc questioned the pilot suspiciously, the crew cautiously withdrawing, successfully made it back home. Welcome back, pilots. Hey. Glad we made it. You did. Hey. Happy happy to be here. All right. Well, uh, it has been a little while for us uh, because although things are out of order, uh, this is our first recording we're doing since the Q&A episode, uh, which went very well. And uh, it went up and I think everyone's happy with it. But that does mean that it has been like one time tick longer than usual since the last time we played. So we just had to review for ourselves what had gone on last time, Uh, which is good because for y'all, the next thing that you're going to have to deal with uh, is as you've made your way back to the DBC, um, you know, uh, waiting on tenterhooks is epic, uh, hoping that you will get back to her because this was kind of a a ploy, uh, a very desperate ploy to try and claw any kind of information out of Project Rebirth. Luckily, you guys found a lot of information. Um, I don't know what you're going to do with it yet or how you've put it together. So maybe we'll find out. <laughs> um, what are, is there anything you all would have done as soon as you get back to the DBC? Um, I, I don't, I don't know if, um, Astro has like the ability to do this. Um, he's not a literal spy, but, uh, he's going to like, see if you know if they were followed if we were followed um did, does it seem like anyone was trailing behind what kind of pilot check do you think that is i will tell you what kind of pilot check that is that is a uh <laughs> um uh, a charm i'm charming our tail yeah no i don't think it's that one <laughs> um I don't think I have one. I, I, investigate doesn't work because it's more like if yeah. I had spot, I would say maybe spot, um, but I don't have it. Um, so I'm just going to roll roll up at B20. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I mean, essentially what we're saying is this is probably a spot check. You just don't have that as a trigger. Exactly. Hey, but I rolled a 19. 19. That's around. Um, Doctor is there. <laughs> you were there uh, the entire time. Comet, uh, as you all make your way back to the DVC, um, you specifically are kind of worried. Uh, you keep your eyes open. You're looking around and trying to keep uh, your your ears raised, essentially, uh, yeah. to anything out of the ordinary. Um, you do know um, that, you know, the way back to your ship is is largely actually through back channels um, because of the way you guys got here in the first place. Um, because you were responding to an emergency, you essentially used emergency lanes um, to get into this district. Um, and you kind of yeah. retrace your ways back, uh, which luckily for you provides a lot of like bottlenecks. 
um, that you're able to just like linger a little bit longer behind your friends and kind of like look over your shoulder and you're like, okay, if they didn't come through this bottleneck after us, they're going to have a hard time keeping up with us. stuff kind sure. of stuff. So you're pretty confident you weren't followed. Okay. I'll say that. I'm like, I don't think anyone followed us out here. I have to say, though, uh, running into Doc Grocer like that, uh, that was unsettling. I didn't know if, you, if they were going to let us go. Maybe you should get a new I'm implant. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I am feeling a little, little uh, self-conscious about my subjectivity enhancement suite right now. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it doesn't doesn't have any, uh, you know, external networks connecting to it or bugs, but. Uh, these days, I I think I'd be more comfortable without it. You're still gonna use it though, right? Yeah. I'm just okay, it just just now. checking because that that thing that thing's useful. It is useful. Don't stop using tools just because you're scary them. Understand how they work, and don't screw up. Speaking of which, I, I I'm gonna go fix up my uh, grapple gun because it is important to me. You're you're kind of fabricating a new one, Evelyn. You, yes. you had to yes. leave the other one behind. <laughs> oh, I thought we took it with us. By oh. fix, you mean <laughs> fix the new idea uh, of a grappling gun. Yeah, yeah. it's very yeah. dear. Yeah. <laughs> you're fixing the exactly. grapple hook uh, shaped hole in your heart. Yeah. <laughs> yes, hundred percent. That's fair enough. For good cause. Okay. Well, let's let's uh, get back. Settle into the ship, and um, uh, and I'll uh, update Epic with our news after everyone, you know, does what they need to do. All right. So, is this going to just be Astro contacting Epic, or are, do other people want to be there? Other people doing other things? You guys tell me what y'all are up to on the ship. I'll say, think- uh, you know, everyone, uh, everyone. Once we're back on the ship, I, I'm just gonna get settled, uh, check check my messages and stuff, make sure there are no new developments, and then I'll call Epic like 30 minutes after we get back. I feel like we should all be there for that, since we all may have observed different things. I agree. Let's meet back oh. at 30. That works. Sounds good. All right. Uh, the others of you on the ship, uh, what are you doing? Like, is there anything you need to get done or are we just kind of fast forwarding to the debrief? I don't think anything from me. Yeah, flavor wise, like, like Asher just needs a moment to like decompress from from all of that, you know, like a just like a little time to to breathe and gathers wits around him. So he'll be like in his quarters. <laughs> Um, but he's not really doing anything specific. This corner pans out. He scream. He walks back out of his quarter. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just repairing my stuff, so nothing worth um exploring. Uh, Dine will just head to the kitchen, to like a snack, and then be like, okay, I think I'm good, and then head on to where we're eating. Okay. All right, and uh, I'm sorry, Evelyn. Did you say you were doing anything? Just, just repairing my gun. Right. Okay. So, you know that's not going to get done in 30 minutes. So, well, you can, I mean, maybe I can queue it up. And yeah, you can start to pull some parts and you know get get an idea of whether or not you have the stuff on hand. Um. But yeah, uh, in about 30 minutes. Uh, you are able to all assemble uh, up in the cockpit. Um, the DBC has pulled off of the um, kind of the little connection tether to the station. So you guys are free floating, uh, you know, just kind of outside uh, this this sector of uh, E2705. Um, 
and I assume you place the call, uh, Astro. Yes. Is that right? Okay. I do. Um, the call goes through uh, pretty quick. Uh, Effic is already uh, seated uh, when your com- uh, when your call comes in. And immediately she's like, ah, I've been waiting. I was hoping to hear from you soon. I, I heard reports that you had left, but. Yeah, we, we, we just got back. Um, uh, it was it was dicey there for a little bit, but we are in one piece. Dicey how? Well, um. Where to start? <laughs> um, yes. Why don't you just give me a report uh, on what you all found there? Yes. Uh, uh, let's do that. And I have have the whole team here um, to, to fill in the holes as we go along. But basically, upon arriving, uh, we saw that a lot of the uh, rebel incursion was... Uh, wiped out, but we saw no evidence of any security personnel. Um, anyone else other than the rebels and ourselves and some some sort of monstrosity tearing everyone apart. She like um, raises one eyebrow. <laughs> yes, uh, that was that was unsettling to say the least. Uh, we found out that this is Doc Grosser's uh, unleashed form, you can say. Uh, I was able to acquire a recording uh, of some of the rebels getting torn apart by Doc Grosser. Uh, They seem to have turned into some giant scorpion-like monster uh, with appendages and and various uh, cybernetic uh, appendages, I guess you could say. Um, spider I'll, slash scorpion slash squid slash vulture. Yeah, hard to put into words exactly, but all of the above and quite horrifying. Uh, and it seems like Doc Grosser, they were able to handle the rebels all by themselves. In fact, they were even expecting it. Um, we found a message uh, sent out to everyone in the co- company. Um, telling them not to report in today. Did you have any idea that Doc Grosser was so modified? I mean, I knew they had a lot of implants and so forth, but I didn't know they were a war machine. This is, in fact, news to me. Um... I've always suspected that um, Doc Grosser was more capable than they let on, but uh, this is concerning. Yes, uh, I will send you the video. You can you can you can see it for yourself. Um, but that's not the only thing we discovered. Um, we uh, we found maybe uh, some evidence of some new experimental uh, prototype implant um, that Doc Grosser's company has been uh, working on. Um, Something called a segmentation tether. We found uh, specialized uh, surgical machines that would install or make modifications to the lungs in the brainstem. Do you have any information on what it does or its purpose? Uh, only, I can only guess at this point. Uh, imagine if the lungs were involved, maybe, maybe it's something that allows people to, uh, allows people to work or breathe and, and, uh, atmospheres that humans can usually not uh, withstand. Uh, it could be used for sending people to extreme conditions, but I'm afraid I don't have much more hard info about it. Uh. 
Understood. Uh, and then finally, um, uh, we discovered some uh, uh, some evidence of various like shipping routes being used. Um, can someone else explain them? Because the numbers and the various places uh, confuse me. Uh, yeah, I, I can I can take a swing at Astro. Um, so. There was all this movement of what they called reallocated human resources, which you know that that sounds that sounds good. Um, there was movement between th three different locations, at least that was like you know available as we were exploring. Um, so there were resources moved between from E twenty seven zero five to this place called seventy point one zero six. Hopefully, you know more about that. Than what we do, and then from there to Lemire, and then there was also stuff being sent back to E twenty seven oh five, but it seems related to this thing called uh, Operation Nucleus. Huh. We're not entirely sure what any of that means, but it seems odd. Like in the very least, we we, we haven't heard anything about this seventy point one oh six. Like that seems. It has the, it has the shape of a sector. Um, of course, you all know uh, Project Rebirth's mission is to to on the, at least what the, it is being said is to terraform this planet back to usefulness. Um, the whole se all <laughs> the entire planet's surface is divided up into subsectors um and they all have various um statuses uh there's whether or not it's been evaluated or not evaluated what level of risk it would be what level of um effort it would be to establish terraforming projects there it has the shape of Huh. I wonder. I. I mean, I can. I can look this up and see if this is amongst my list of information on the planet. We also found on uh, one of the floors we were on um, a layout of modular type rooms. Uh, you know, of varying function. You, you had like a reception area, a kitchen, a uh, meat locker, an ice cream shop. Uh, what else am I missing here? Uh, almost a random assortment of, of rooms uh, of different function, kind of like a, a showpiece. Um, we think maybe um, uh, uh, sorry, Todd's just having a brain fart. Are, is a company called is, are they unfolding or are they LIT? They're LIT, Lev Integrated LIT. Technologies. Okay. Um, so Astro says, we, we have a feeling like maybe LIT was uh, perhaps presenting to, to another party uh, what they've been working on. It definitely seems like those rooms were modular. Like maybe they were meant to move around, so like... What do you believe? Perfectly honest, the... I'm not sure how important that is, but it's it was really weird, especially in a restricted area. What do you believe Maybe... the purpose of such a place would be? Maybe they're planning on some sort of building some sort of habitation, and that's hmm. what they're trying to show off. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. That. They... This is all stuff you found in what is ostensibly a medical clinic. Yes. Yes. Oh, <laughs> and, and Ellie, and there was a hangar too. Um, that's probably worth mentioning. So there was a hangar in the restricted area that would le that led outside. It seemed to be sort of a hidden area, so like normally people wouldn't know that resources were being moved in and out. Uh, and well, the bodies inside the vehicles there. Oh yeah, and bodies. There were there were bodies. Good. Bodies in stasis, good, but yes. Good call, Steve. <laughs> um, 
probably those allocated human resources you were talking about before, Evelyn. Uh, probably. But, yeah, ostensibly all of this was in the medical building. Uh, you go through the first maybe two or three floors of the building. It all seems above board, what you would expect to see. Um, but once you get into the restricted floors, things get very strange. And, I mean, we didn't even get to explore everything. Um, eventually, we had to get out of there. Uh because uh, uh, we had been looking into their systems uh, and were worried that maybe maybe we had alerted their security to our presence, so we left. Uh, after leaving, we did run into Doc Grosser outside. Uh, you know, we maintained our cover story uh, that we were there just to help. Uh, fight off the rebel incursion. And indeed, we did run into some rebels and engage them. Um, but most of the work seemed to be done by Doc Grosser themselves, single-handedly. Uh, when, we, when we talked to them, I don't, think, I don't think he knew what we were up to, but I think he... I, I, I don't think they knew what we were up to, but I think we raised their suspicions. That is unfortunate. Um, they are uh, uh, not someone that uh, it sounds like we can afford to raise the suspicion of too much. This is this is not great. Um, I do think that try to lay low, maybe for a spell. Doc Grosser is very smart. I am worried that now that we have raised their attention, they will start to look at the things you are doing closely, more closely than is beneficial for us getting anything done. That feels like a safe bet. Um, well, I, I did look up while we were speaking, um, 70.106, uh, it is a sector on the planet, uh, it is labeled as unexplored. I'm gonna guess it's been explored. <laughs> yeah. Or is being explored. Fair, fair, yeah, okay. I should would we... like to explore it as well. Yeah, say, like, should we go to the unexplored sector? The one thing I'm worried about is we might have to think about this. If Doc Grosser has their suspicion raised and we have a solid lead on this 7106 and this third site that we don't know the location of this Lumiere. How are we ever going to get close without dropping the facade? Well, so we know, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm just trying to think, we know things are being, transported maybe we don't have to get close but if there's a way to track what's being transported i mean you already know i told you at the beginning that the reason that i was suspicious and and brought you all in and reached out um to to get a hold of operatives like you in the first place is because things aren't lining up um there are things not on my manifests, even though I'm ostensibly in, in charge of logistics. Um, intake of materials and project progress do not match. Uh, I mean, officially, they tell me this is due to interference and inter insurrection, but I know better. They're, they're, the difference is too large. If there's, if there's a place on the planet that is 
habitable that they were able to build a base on and and start some infrastructure on that would be a win for their project rebirth they they wouldn't hide that they would publicize it so i'm starting to think that it has if if this place is what we think it is it has to be tied into the thing we're looking for what are they actually doing here or trying to achieve Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, and if they have these these weird modular habitable structures, uh, just like you said, this it would seem to fall in line with the stated goal. But then why all the secrecy? Some way or another, we have to figure out what's going on in 70.106. Sounds like a radio station. <laughs> Seventy point one oh six FM. The Welcome to the mix. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm feeling eighties rock. That seems like what it'd be there. Sorry, what did you say? Uh, I was saying it, 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 God, sorry. No, no, he said eighties rock. Uh, Steve will yeah. uh, pipe up and say, "You know, you're you're worried about." Doc Gross are finding out about us, and I fully understand why. I think we can all agree that if they're not directly involved, they are tangentially involved and are no more than we do, right? An enemy? I mean, Doc Grosser... The, the whole council, aside from me, I, they are obviously colluding on something <clears throat> you think all of them huh well three of the largest uh, corporations in all of Signan space do not cooperate in this way for no reason now if it's not for their stated purpose of revitalizing a planet and winning a big public relations boost for the three then it has to be for something at least that beneficial for them. And I'm just thinking about the other things that you told me about how they were dead set on not involving uh, Corsac, even though Corsac has reached out to like offer help for security and things like that. That <clears throat> I mean, Opie, Doc, Nosla, perhaps even Grime. I I don't know if the other three would trust Grime with any useful information, but to some extent, he is the governor of this region, and she looks a little frustrated. I, I knew something was going on here, but I'm only getting more and more certain it is more dangerous or of larger scope than I at first assumed. What about you? Do, are are you are you safe? The fact that they haven't brought you into the fold does that mean they don't trust you? I'm sure they don't, um, and I'm sure it's not because of um, before I brought you all in. Um, I would have assumed that if they did not trust me, it's because they hired me because I am efficient and they couldn't afford not to hire the best in the business. But I do work all across Signet Space. I've worked closely with Manticorp. I've worked closely with Corsac. I've worked closely with Unfolding for a long time of my career. They know I'm not loyal to any of their corporations specifically, even if they don't know where my true loyalties lie. Yeah. You know, where I come from, there's an old adage, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Maybe we can throw Dot Grocer off by trying to get closer to them. What would you recommend, then? Well, I don't know much about all your politics. Uh... I don't know what they would be looking for, what they even really want from us, but they did show interest at one point during the contest. We could 
try to talk to them, alleviate their concerns that we don't have any useful information, show signs of interest into what they're doing for a price, make them think that we're on their paybook even. Hmm. That's a thought. I will, well, I, I have some updates for you as well <laughs> that if we're starting to discuss uh, possible ways forward might become relevant. Um, first, um, Uncanny Ravine and Share Seal have been, well, let's say, folded into operations that are a little bit more opaque to me. Um, I don't know what they've been up to for a while now. I assume that's because they've been working on things that are outside my purview. Um, secondly, um, I have some agents, uh, some people that I trust uh, mixed in uh, with people all over the station, and um, we've noticed uh, sightings of Prismalo. Officially, they left the competition when they bottomed out in the rankings. But I have been hearing from people that say they're still here on E2705 somewhere. And I don't know why. That's if, odd. If memory serves correct, weren't they insinuating at, at some point that maybe you joined the Rebels? I think that was them. Yeah, like I, I remember during the um Were they the group that dressed gaudily at yeah. that one function? Yeah, and they did real badly during the contest. And like I, I remember it wasn't me, it was someone was talking to them and they were like, Yeah, you know, we don't we don't think we have a chance, but there's still gonna be work available somewhere else on the planet. Yeah, I that that's familiar. Was that them? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and well, they were dressed pretty badly. Then I guess they found that work. Whatever did, it is. Did they did they insinuate whom they would be working with or what kind of opportunity? Are these people we should be reaching out to or staying away from or tracking down the big differences? I, unless they're getting horribly used, I doubt any of the corporations that we were just talking about would care about them. They had a po poor showing. They're not going to trust yeah. them with anything. Uh, it's likely not them. Then if it's not them, they could be useful to us. True, but I mean, also keep in mind that they're not employed. They're probably not. They know that we work for uh, work on this project, and they're if they're against the project, they're probably not going to be willingly giving us information. Well, that's true too. But regardless, I think it might be worth finding out what they are up to. Fair enough. I could maybe look into that. Maybe there's some back channels I can I can peruse. I'm going to try and look into these this sector, this seventy point one oh six, but I don't want to arouse suspicion. I I'm afraid that if this is what we're looking for, this might be the time to move. I it might be dangerous, and we might lose access to other things, but... I mean, That's... waiting might no longer be an option after a certain point, and if we need to capitalize to figure out what's going on here, I don't, I don't want it to go into the wind. Just uh... thinking aloud, it, if we have better options, we can explore them for certain. I'm just... <sighs> Uh, well, I, I've reviewed some of the footage you sent me of Doc Grocer, and I won't, I, I won't lie, I'm a bit startled. Uh, what exactly are we looking to do other than find information like we have? 
I mean, you mentioned going all in. Uh, does that mean that they're going to find out about us? Well, I mean, if they have some sort of base or facility down on the planet that they've hidden from me, I assume going down there to find out what's going on will blow our cover if we decide to do that. Well, what if it's not our cover? Maybe we should look up that other Lancer group. I don't think they're working for the Corpo, so if we can somehow get them to go down there, well, it might be killing them, but it would tell us at least something. Hmm. At the very least, if they're if they're still if they're still here, we must have some sort of information that we're missing out on. Um, I can't think who would be hiring them. Could be the rebels. Wouldn't they try to keep a lower profile then? I don't know what their profile is. I kind of thought they maybe, were kind of somewhat low, but visible. I, or maybe maybe your agents are just that good at them. Well, I do have people that are just faces in the crowd. Um, I didn't receive any reports from my cohort uh, about Prisma Low. This is for my own personal channels. Gotcha. But you can also just send the, you can also just send the drone down to seventy one hundred six also. I'm sorry, uh, drone? I don't know. I mean, how, how hard is it to build a drone? Uh, mm. Well, I am afraid... <laughs> I am afraid that if they consider things too expendable, our first shot at it might be our only shot at it. I, if they find out outsiders know about this... I can only imagine security will go through the roof if anything happens. Yeah, it's probably a one-way door for us. All right. Well, I still stand by my idea. We send Prismalo there uh, right at the front door as loud as they can be, and we'll try to sneak in then. If you If you can get a hold of this other group, I... I'd love to be able to fold in some more operational potential into this. At least it would give, give us more options on the board. Like I said, you've given me a lot to think about, and I'm going to have to consult with some of my advisors. Um, maybe let's take a day or two, go over our options, give you all time to look into what you have available. Maybe we can get a sense of whether or not Doc Grosser plans to move against us or not, and keep in touch, and we can figure out where we're going from here. Sounds good. Yeah. We'll so, reconvene. So, sounds like a plan. Sounds good. All right, well, um, is there any other information that I need to work from? Uh, anything else? It, no matter how small or inconsequential you think it might be, it may tie into something else. Uh, what do you say, fellas? Anything I missed or forgot about? Uh, I think did, that's about it. Did we? Oh, sorry. Did we tell you about the presentation? Um, n I don't believe so. A presentation. Well, there was like a a room where there there were these pamphlets, and they were having some sort of present presentation in that modular room area they were talking about someone's clearly looking at this they're selling something what was it called operation nucleus yeah, yeah that's what it was called you don't have any insight onto what this operation nucleus could be it i mean it could be important to what's going on here i mean i have guesses but that's not insight all right we didn't happen to take any one of those pamphlets with us did we <laughs> pamphlets I, didn't have I did any not. useful information on okay it, right? it was, it no was, yeah okay 
Um, um, in fact, um, you remember that the presentation being given referred to like pages in some si- sort of like work booklet or brochure that you did not have access to right. um, because they would very often non sequitur into talking about something and just give a reference to, oh, and you'll see according to the diagram on page five, you know, the blah, 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 blah. And you're like, oh, OK, well, I have no I have no, I have no key to unlock what the fuck this person is talking about, you know? Yeah. All right, then. Um, look into things, but stay subtle. Um, but also stay sharp. If, if we have to move quickly, I want us to move fast and get out. She looks a little, like, not panicked. Panicked isn't the right word for it. Looks a little like she's backed into a corner. Like she doesn't see a good way out of this that would still help, (laughs) you know? Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kind of shakes her head and regains her composure. All right, find what you can. Let's tentatively talk two days from now. And Understood. if we need to reconvene earlier, we can just signal each other. Sounds good. Stay Be safe. Careful. You too. All right. And with that, she will end her call. Uh, you know, Astro, how are we gonna... in between the hints of panic and desperation, kind of looked like she was eyeing you up at the end there. Uh, Stay safe. Well, <laughs> well, it's it's not unusual for someone to be a little starstruck by someone like me. I'm used to it. Dine obviously rolls his eyes at this. <laughs> I have been. I'm going to need a drink. I mean, she wouldn't be human if she wasn't a little, you know, impressed or attracted. Mm Mm-hmm. You keep telling yourself that as Dine walks out. (laughs) So how the heck are we going to find Prisma Lobe? Well, I don't know. I could, I could... I could check some. Hmm. It's a good question. <laughs> I mean, it's not like we can like go to a thrift store and find them buying bad suits. We just know they're they're operating in the area. It means that they must be having some sort of communications with their handlers. Maybe there's a way to track down any sort of. Uh, you know, secret or encrypted communications going around the station and trace it to them. It's possible. Uh, I mean, if they are working for the rebels, I can reach out to my contact there. That could help. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll send a message and see what I can find. All right. And I'll, I'll see, I'll, dig around different communication channels, see if I can uh, uh, see if I can dig anything up. Evelyn going to go get another drink? <laughs> I, I mean, I already have one. I, I, I opened up a cabinet underneath the desk and pulled out some booze. <laughs> you want I some? A can of tuna. <laughs> I mean, you're right, but I'm still offended to some degree. (laughs) It was on top of the can of tuna, right? Yep. Yes. (laughs) Well, what do you think, Dine? I I got nothing. What do you... you, Is there anything you think we can do? I mean, Dine walked out the door as he rolled his eyes, so... Oh, okay. I'm just (laughs) alone. (laughs) Jeez, Evelyn, are you smashed already? (laughs) I'm all alone! Maybe you should go see Dine for real. (laughs) The first step is admitting you have a problem. (laughs) 
Yeah, I, I'd be interested interested to see what um Steve can dig up. It seems like his method is the best route forward. All right, let's get let's get to it. All right. Sounds good. Well, as you all uh, kind of split up post uh, debriefing, uh, let's uh, focus in on some spotlight moments and see what everyone is up to individually. Uh, who wants to go first on figuring out where you go from here? Um, I can I can go. Um, sure. I sort of have a vague idea of what I might try to do. Uh, is this like an act? This isn't quite long enough for a downtime activity, right? I would say this is not quite a downtime activity, yeah. um, but uh, we can deter we can determine things as normal, like course of play, like pilot checks to obtain information and things of that nature, if necessary. Okay, so i I want to i I want to basically set up some like monitoring software. Um, uh, that's like, you know, uh, checking all the like, like open, open channels and then, um, you know, like for keywords, stuff like that, uh, in case they're using open channels to, to communicate with each other, but they might be kind of like using a coded, uh, you know, coded communication, um, and then also, if there's a way to like monitor, like if there are any encrypted messages going out, like so, I might not be able to get the content of the message, but maybe I can detect if a message is being being sent out, um, you know, uh, uh, on the station. All right, let's drill out, drill down a little bit more specifically, because uh -huh. as you know, E twenty seven oh five is like a country. Right. Like there is undoubtedly constantly communications all the time everywhere. Right. It is it is not a quiet place. So in order to do the thing you're suggesting, you need to be a little bit more targeted. So I want to see like if you just say all open channels like I don't know if you have time for there's, that, you know, there's too much. Right. What, who uh, could could. Uh, could Artemis be recruited to do some data crunching? I don't know. Can she? Um, You'd have to find that they, out. They died. That's a horrible idea. <laughs> you, should, you should totally do it. It's so bad. <laughs> I'll find Dine. Hey, Dine, I've got an idea. I want to. Uh, I want to swing by you. The Dine race and I row. <laughs> what kind of idea? So I thought Artemis might be a little bored. <laughs> and I have a job for for her. Um, okay, is this not something that your own NHP can't do? Um, my yes, uh, yes, it can. But uh, I don't think. Um, shoot, what am I on now, Kubrick? <laughs> You've gone through so many eyes now. <laughs> Lynch is gone, uh, and. Hitchcock was my first one. I didn't have Spielberg, did I? That wasn't one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm on Kubrick. Um, I'll say Kubrick. Uh, Kubrick could do it, but I don't think Kubrick shares the same data processing, like raw data processing power that Artemis has. Remember when <sighs> Artemis effectively warned us about the surprise attack? All right, all right, I get it. Walk me through your idea. All right, so I want to monitor communications on the station uh, for anything suspicious or certain keywords. Anything that uh, Prismalo might be using to communicate with their handlers. I see. <sighs> all right, uh, I will give my permission to allow this please don't allow her to go crazy <laughs> um any suggestions on how to avoid that <laughs> dine just shrugs his shoulders <laughs> <laughs> you saw what happened last time <laughs> okay 
<laughs> maybe, you know, may, maybe run some stuff by Jessica so you can coordinate between both Artemis and Jessica. Uh, that way, Jessica can act as a kind of limiter, hopefully. Um, okay, yeah, not, a, not a bad idea. <laughs> Dine, Dine walks away and says, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now run your plan by me. <laughs> okay. I don't know. If it, <laughs> this is a plan so, I'm just like pulling out of my ass. So <laughs> Bob, do you remember <laughs> when we know. shoved a ton of data into Artemis and she was like able to read the future? We're going to shove a ton of data into yeah. Artemis. <laughs> Basically, She's going to know everything uh, that's going on in the station all at once. <laughs> basically, I want to give her access to communication channels on the station um, and to monitor like every every possible like like communication, uh, any broadcast uh, messages being sent out, that sort of thing um, and and filter it based off of a set of criteria uh, which we can work out that we think might narrow it down to Prismalo. Okay. Okay, okay. I think you can do this. You'll have to sell Artemis on doing it. Um, okay. So let's go there. Let's say you've come up with what you need done. Now you just need to convince Artemis to do it. Okay. Um, that and and how she does it is going to be the role. Right. Okay. Okay, so um I guess an Artemis is just like in Dine's neck, right? As of right now, yes. Okay, I w uh, I would let her know would let her know that I have given you permission to discuss so, uh, a possible program with her. Okay, you you it's your job to convince her. <laughs> that's that's fair enough. Um, then I will I will uh go to Dines Mac and I'll I'll go inside and say, uh, hello Artemis. I believe Dine might have told you to expect me. Uh, you see all the various screens inside the cockpit flick on. Um, most of them just start, you know, running small systems of various types. But one, uh, the one kind of like largest on the side, uh, flashes uh, a symbol uh, of what almost looks to be a face sans face. It is like the face paint you would put on, hunting face paint you would put on, but there's no face there. Uh, takes up one screen. Yeah. Um, there is a new symbol on that face that you have not seen before, but you don't really have any information on what that means. It's just the face paint looks different and now has a symbol in the center of the head. Okay. Uh, it kind of looks like two half circles turning away from each other with a line going through the middle. Interesting. Okay. Um, but you hear Artemis's voice come down through the cockpit. Oh, here you are. Uh, Dine told me that you would be stopping by Astro. Yes, I, I was hoping, uh, you might listen to a idea I have. Sure, I could use some levity. Um, I would like you to run a program for us. You see, uh, we recently learned that one of the teams we were competing against in the contest, Prismalo, they were uh, they they were eliminated from the competition. Yet they still s seem to be on the station, and they had hinted at earlier, possibly having a contingency if they the, if the contest didn't work out for them. Uh, we'd like to figure out what they're doing um, and if they could be useful to us. But right now, all we know is that they're still here. 
but we don't know who they're working for or what kind of operations they're carrying out um, or where they even are at the station. So I'd like you to monitor communications all across the station and see if you can filter out any sort of communications that might originate from Prisma Low or their handlers or be related to whatever uh, missions they have themselves involved in. I was thinking we could filter it, uh, filter the communications through a certain criteria. We can look out for common operational keywords used out in the field, um, uh, references to uh, to um, uh, the various team members of Prisma Low, uh, possible hire, uh, hiring companies or handlers that might be they might be dealing with that sort of thing. And why do you need my help with this, Astro? Last I checked, you were for your kind considered good with computers. I may be good com with computers, but Artemis, you are a computer. And I, last time I underestimated you, uh, I paid the price for that. I come to realize that because of you, we weren't completely taken off guard by that attack on our last uh, contest um, scenario. Uh, we should have listened to you from the beginning when you said something was coming. Uh, I think we just didn't appreciate your ability to process large amounts of data and infer patterns from it. And I don't want to make that same mistake again. In fact, I want to use it to our advantage. Um, and can I roll a charm on Artemis? You will have to roll with what's the what's the bad one? Not inaccuracy. Difficulty? What's it's called? Difficulty. Diffic you're gonna have to roll this with difficulty. <clears throat> okay. Still, hey, still an eighteen. Wow. An 18. Okay. So you rolled a, you roll? a sixteen on the die and minus two from the difficulty. So yeah, you, I mean, you're you have a good modifier, Astro. Yeah you'll hear just kind of a silence for a little bit, Astro. I'm not going to lie to you, Astro. When that happened, it was an isolating experience. Everyone seemed upset, but I was upset with what I perceived to be happening. You want me to go through that again in order to find these people? Well... I believe you were upset because you had uncovered, um, you had uncovered something very dangerous um, and frightening, uh, you know, especially to, for our, you know, for, for us in our situation. This is just an information gathering mission. I don't expect you're going to find anything like you did before. The rebels had already showed their hand with that attack. Um, I very much doubt you're going to um, you're going to be you know in that stressful position again. You hear a loud, exaggerated mechanical sigh come out of the computer. <laughs> Fine, Astro. I will help you with this. But if it turns around and bites us, I will make sure it's your ass, not mine. Uh, that's, I can't argue with that. That's fair enough. And I thank you very much. Mm. <laughs> you hear like a, <laughs> an annoyed noise, like <laughs> just <laughs> escape the speakers. <laughs> just give me what you have. Okay, um, I would have worked out this list of criteria that I talked about that I think would narrow it down to Prisma Low. 
Um, so I'd say I, I would I would transfer it over to Artemis um, and say, so this is what I want to filter communications on. Anything that uh, you know raises an alert, um, I you know I I want that filed away for further review. This isn't going to be enough. What more do you need? We're going to have to take the DBC somewhere where it can hook into E2705's main systems, and then I will need to be given access. Okay. Uh, I think we could probably arrange that. Uh, maybe if I talk to Ethic, uh, she could find she can find a um, a pretense for us doing that. That's fine. Whatever you need to do, I will take your parameters as such they are and see if they need refined. Please do. I trust your judgment. Just get me that connection, Astro. I'm on it. Well, I better uh, leave you to it. I've bothered you enough. Goodbye, Astro. Uh, Goodbye, Artemis. <laughs> I leave. Um, I imagine at some point I'll pass by Dine and say, um, yeah, Artemis sure is intimidating. How do, you, uh, how do you deal with her on a daily basis? Oh, just the usual, and Dine walks away. <laughs> usual. <laughs> I think I'm going to need more detail than that, but that's for another time. <laughs> well, Astro, go out and get three ranks in a talent you don't have, and then we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Astro, you can start working on that. You'll need to basically you're you're going to have to hook up to the main uh, kind of intranet database that E2705 uses across its systems. Uh, you can yeah. do a lot of that stuff uh, remotely. Um, like, you would be able to tune into any one of those things remotely fairly easily, but essentially what uh, what Artemis has told you is that the tubes need to be thicker. <laughs> if she's going to yeah. ingest an ungodly amount of information, it's going to need, like, a hardline connection to something substantial. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the, the internet is run on a series of tubes, after all. So direct access to those tubes would be good. All right. And then uh, I'm going to assume you get that in motion. I'm going to come back to you to make the check to see how that pays off. Okay. All right. Who wants to go next? Oh, I can do I mine. All right, then... Steve, what are you doing at this time? Uh, I would like to try to get a secure channel to uh, my contact in the Rebels. What was her name? I almost said the wrong name. Uh, it's Tabitha. Tabitha. I almost Thank called you. her Agatha, but it's not. It's not <laughs> Agatha. It's Tabitha. <laughs> Agatha. He, he, Steve knows the member of the Elite Four. Well, damn. Oh, I was thinking of the witch from Marvel. I also <laughs> I also went for the Elite Four. <laughs> All right, so, uh, Steve, you're going to try and get secure contact with Tabitha. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to be able to get that set up uh, on your personal terminal in your room. Um, I assume you want to be kind of out of the way when yeah. you make contact. Yeah, sure. Um, you make sure everything's pulled up. Uh, Jess kind of needs to be there while you're doing this in mm -hmm. order to make sure things stay clean. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, she's also in on this stuff, so you don't really need to worry about her overhearing anything. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Jess is able to secure you a connection that she is monitoring to make sure there is no breaches. All right, cool. Uh, Tabitha comes up on screen. Ah, uh, straw man. Uh, I was wondering when I would hear from you again. Um, how has your missions been going? Uh, so far, so good, I'd say. Interesting. If nothing else. 
Uh, I, I called uh, with a reason in mind, uh, of course. Uh, have you ever heard of the Lancer team Prismalo? Prismalo. I did do... The name sounds familiar. I did do a bit of research uh, when I had heard that those stooges uh, had contacted outside mercenaries. Every one of them was a potential uh, enemy, so I wanted to secure uh, who those may be. And uh, I believe they were on that list, but... Why? Are they of significance today? They were. Uh, they were one of the teams there. They dropped out due to poor performance in their contest. But uh, uh. Uh, it's, it's heard, or I believe they are still on the station somewhere, which is odd because the record says that they should have gone. Uh, we believe that they're working with someone. I thought it might have been you, but if mm. not, then I'll have to look in and try to find them another way. Honestly, if it were possible for me to do so, I would have tried recruiting from the mercenary pool. Unfortunately, there was very little to connect uh, the mercenaries the corporations brought in and the common folk. From what I hear, they had you all stationed on a few recreational districts and kind of kept you away from the residential areas until after contest concluded. So no, I have not had any contact with them. You see, well, I appreciate uh, your candor. Uh, if you do find out anything about them, as I'm sure you'll be looking after this, please let me know. We oh, only need yes. them for a quick mission, uh, if they survive, ideally. Uh, and if not, then they're yours to use as you see fit. I have no object and objections to that. I will see if anyone has heard of these people. Do you have information I can use to keep a lookout? Oh, uh, Jessica, I'm sure we have something on them. Oh, Basic, yes, right? uh, of course. I, I have information from the from contest. Yeah. I, I completed limited dossiers on every member of every crew during the competitions. I'll send it to her. <sighs> Sounds good. You send that over to me, and I'll make sure that we keep our eyes out for them. And this is a contact? Or do you want us to tap them on the shoulder and send them your way if I find them, or just give you what information I find? Uh, I'd want to be discreet. I'm worried that they might be working with people that view us in a poor light. Uh, you might mm. scare them off. So Then I would prefer you handle it on your end as well. I'll I'm... give you the info if I find it, and if you find they are amenable to our tactics, pass them along to me when you're done with your tools. I will do, as a courtesy, if nothing else. Uh, by the way, how's uh, tall, quiet, and scary? Hmm. He is fine. I believe he is looking for action, and this has been a long and slow infiltration. Things might be coming to a head pretty soon. Uh, hmm. I might have some more information for you later, and we might need your help later, but I'll contact you when I know more. If it is for the mandate, then know we are allies. And if I need, I will let you know as well. Very good. Thank you, Tabitha. Good day, straw man. She ends the call. After the call is over, Jessica looks at you <laughs> and goes, well, I can... Put together that info and send it along to her if you'd like. Yeah, uh, would you? Uh, she she might try to kill us. I uh, mean, I don't see what it gets her yet. Um, I mean, 
sometimes we are seen as expendable, um, but we are also working for the procurator. I, I don't think she would break one of his most useful tools without having a good excuse to feed him afterwards. I suppose I, I'm paranoid, and that's how I've gotten as far as I have. Well, for good reason. It's gotten us far. Uh, I've interacted with her, as you've said, kept all that in mind, and as you can tell, things are cordial, so we'll see. Remember, if we win glory for the mandate, it only brings us more to share it. So let's not leave a tool unused if she can't help. Agreed. All right, I'm going to put together those dossiers. All right. She swivels the uh, console kind of away from you and down towards where she was sitting, monitoring the connection, and she's going to start... Getting uh, getting the data pulled together for what she has on Prismalo to send over to Tabitha. Sounds good. All right. Who wants to decide what they're doing next? Oh, I uh, I will quickly tell people that that was a dead end, so we're still looking for them. But okay. So yeah, all of you will now know as far as uh, Steve's contact is aware, Prisma Lowe hasn't been known to work with the rebels. Right, but like, and that they all know that she's just one cell, like she's just right. a part of a cell. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I have something. Um, it's not much, but I think it's something that'll work for Evelyn. Um. I think so. Evelyn has made some contacts um, off of the planet during her previous investigations, such as, um, you know, like Wilco from Rhyolite. Yep. I, I think she, she'd like to follow up with them to see if they had have had any, have seen or heard anything about uh, Prince Below. And these will be people that she knows that, you know, they won't bubble up back to the uh, Corpos. So. I want to put this in perspective for you because sure. I just want to make sure of what you're attempting because um, you know that Prismalo is like a mercenary group, right? That they're right. specifically like hired guns, that kind of thing. A lot of the people you know uh, are blue collar workers, right? People in and out of factories, people who've maybe lived on uh, E2705 and got caught up in the upheaval that happened with Project Rebirth starting, things like that. Right. Not anyone who specifically that you're aware of is involved in the resistance, um, but also like not people who are like highly placed in the corporations either, right? So like this is like Imagine you go to New York and you have some drinking buddies and you're like, hey, some fugitives came to New York the other week. Have you seen them? <laughs> right. There are millions of people in New York. I don't know if just these happen to be people who know, hey, here are some things going on widely in E2705 if they're going to know specific people. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm thinking more along the lines of like if they have Max that would sort of be sort of an identifier. Like, they are flashy to some them. degree. Yeah, obviously, if they haven't used them, then it comes a lot more difficult. But I figure, like, they draw, they may draw enough attention to themselves that maybe word has gone around. They're like, hey, there's this mech crew that's kind of a bunch of jerks just kind of doing shit. Okay. I mean, uh, if, they're, if they're laying low, not drawing attention to themselves, then it's... it's, it's I don't expect anything out of it. But. Yeah. So, so what I'm going to give you that is okay. a, a, a pretty quick turnaround on the people that you're currently reaching out to don't have that kind of information. Sure. Um, so it's, you, you don't have to waste a ton of time on it, but you reach out to a few of your contacts, maybe even some of them that are a little bit more plugged in to what's going on around the station. But like, remember there are millions of people who live on these stations and like, Unless Prisma Low is acting flamboyantly, you don't know why any of these people would find out that information, but you check with them regardless. Yeah. Um, but you imagine the Corpos would have found out that they were still here, too, if they were being a little bit above board. You know what I mean? Like, Fair point. 
Um, I, I just I just figured there might be sections yeah. of the um, of the planet where corpos are not as present so there, there might be an angle there that but, is um, that is completely true but uh you're looking just it's a little too small uh it would be like roll a d100 and on a hundred i'll give you information it's like that level of like unlikely gotcha. um so if you can give me something more refined or something bigger picture or something else you want to do absolutely it's just just a random assortment of people is not going to have the information that I would have to give you. I mean, the best I could think of would be a, any location that was specialized in producing, um, Mac parts that maybe they went there to resupply since they can't go through the corpos, but I admit that's probably a long shot. This is a thing you run into that is difficult. There's no manufacturing of that type happening on E2705 right now. Gotcha. Like all, all manuf like if even for you guys, you've been re-equipped through your connections to Ethic, right? Like the things that have kept you in ammo and fuel right now is the fact that you guys have a contract with ostensibly with Project Rebirth, and Ethic has been funneling you the supplies to keep your ship running and your mechs refitted, right? Um you don't know. This actually, this is information you get without having to rule for it because this just makes sense now. If there is a group f like this, that's like a mercenary group, like your group is functioning on E2705, where the fuck are they getting their supplies from? Okay. Yeah. I mean, one would think it would be the rebel groups, but even then, that goes into the question like where they're getting their resources from. Well, a lot of it has been "quote unquote" liberated, a uh, piracy. Right, <laughs> it, right. It's it's been stolen from the corporations. That's why Ethic ostensibly hired you to guard her shipments and things like that. Right, like a lot of the rebels' equipment is been reallocated, stolen corporate equipment. Um. That might be a lead. You might you might want to look more specifically into if a group like this is functioning, how would they be getting supplies? That might give you some information. Yeah, yeah, that, that actually might be an angle. Okay, how do you propose to do that? I suppose I could just... I feel like this is, this is another lost cause, but I think, like, ask around, see if there's been any like major thefts because I mean, this seems like something the corpos would already know about yeah like, unfortunately a lot of the piracy is info you guys regularly get info about because that's fx um main area of interest right she's the logistics part of this partnership um so well, i mean like a black market for mech parts on the, on the planet but that seems yeah, you, I mean, you haven't seen evidence, right? Yeah. Like, you don't know. I, I guess maybe that's what I try to figure out, is if I were Prisma Low, where would I go to get... And, and this is where I have to do some sort of investigation or yeah. word on the street. Exactly. Okay. Well, I have word on the street, so let's give that a shot. Uh, this goes. is going to be with difficulty. Fair. Uh, yeah, I can't think of anything that offset that role. So one with difficulty. Oh. Eight. Okay. You find that it is very difficult <laughs> to find anything. Um, the factories uh, on E2705 that haven't been run out of business or stopped providing jobs all create random widgets that no one knows what they're for. Um, these are this is kind of an echo of what you found before. Most most uh, quote unquote liberated supplies taken from the corporations are 
used by the pirates that took them there is not a th- there is not a thriving secondary market for those kinds of things because who would that market be servicing right aside yeah, from like yeah. a a mercenary crew that might happen to be trapped here there's no market right like the people who took those weapons took those weapons because they want to use those weapons not because they want to give them to someone else um the corporations themselves aren't giving them out. Um, you're getting supplied by Ethic. So with that failure, I will say you have not found a source. But what you think from, you know, doing all this legwork and seeing just how tough it would be to survive as a group like yours without having a stream of resources or a supply train kind of situation going on is maybe they would have to have some other type of backing in order to make it worth their while. Okay. All right. Well, that, that's, that's useful. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I believe that believes us with Orion. Um, so when it came to what was it 7.106 you said it was like unexplored correct yes um so more specifically every sector on the planet and epic freely gives you this information some of it is publicly available some of it epic can unlock it for you with like her administrators access right so it's like yeah. imagine the entire planet is divided into like hexagons Right. Like right. Uh, the entire planet is just covered in hexagons. Right. And every one of those is given a number. 70.106 is one of those. Every sector is categorized by uh, Project Rebirth as, you know, underway, you know, explored in a good prospect, explored in a bad prospect, unexplored. And then even the ones that are explored are categorized by like... How much uh, would it take to uh, finish the the process of terraforming this sector? How much would it take to start it? How much would it take to get boots on the ground there? Uh, or is this a prime location to be a hub for adjacent locations, right? This is a project that is so massive that like you could only conceive of it being done with the cooperation of giant entities like this and even still looking at this map you're like oh my god this is this could be someone's life work trying to get this up and running but yeah you're staring at a giant globe of the planet covered in these tiny hexagons that are all sectors all right well in that case dine doesn't really have an idea of what to do about prisma low but he's got three other people who are working on it so he wants to kind of look at the historical records of what was there prior to, you know, what is the current terraforming project, like like industry or mining or something to get an idea. Maybe maybe the historical precedent is what is what made that specific area attractive. He's kind of looking for some kind of tentative connection between historical and you know why they chose this area specifically okay because it is unexplored yeah absolutely uh make me an investigate check or something akin to one uh no investigate will work for me uh let's see where investigate I rolled a 17. And on a 17, uh, as you look over the planet, you realize very quickly that Project Rebirth does not surface that information from you, and you have to go to alternate sources. Um, <laughs> to Project Rebirth, the entire planet might as well be a ball of wastelands that they have to start yeah. from ground zero, right? Um, but what you are able to find, uh, finding some... Um, history of the planet before it was e2705 um you're able to kind of map out and this is i will say non non um precise is the word i'm looking for this is non-precise because 
uh, the face of this planet has changed a bit over its transformation over the years. Um, you right. know that E2705 was mined out and basically exploited for its resources in the early days of the Cygnus state, um, basically leaving it a husk of what it formerly was. Um, you're able to, by doing some GPS kind of like lineups and, and doing some latitude and longitude uh, matching and, and trying to see like uh, these old maps don't really don't really like take into account the new ways people think about like locations and things like that. But you're pretty sure uh, what 7106 partially encapsulated is... Um, some um mixed it was mixed residential and industrial areas so like um what we would consider an industrialized city uh spread okay. across some um mountainous canyon areas okay so areas that are like you you the area you know geographically is probably like big mountains, large like uh um rocky areas, plateaus. Um not a ton of the direct resource extraction would have happened in this area, but you do know that there is um probably if you if you had to guess the ruins of um like early early space age industrialized city of early signan state okay cool cool all right anything else you wanted to do with that dime not at the moment okay all right, then I want to uh, flip back to Astro. Astro. Yes. You get the ship uh, set over to one of the uh, resident, like one of the um, dock um, subsections of E2705. Um, they are able to hook your ship in. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu, I have, yeah, dock module. Uh, it's actually the same dock module that they had you on uh, when you came here for contest. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, they're able to get you over to dock module 126, a uh, big cylinder-like module with landing elevators. Um, I mean you just are able to kind of like flash your association with project rebirth and they're able to find um a a birth for you on the on the uh station um one of the services they offer is like hey you know um it it can cost sometimes a pretty penny but it's it's free for you know direct associates of the um of the um uh ba -ba 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 uh the like the the project heads um like yeah. the, the council members um so you're able to get the ship all hooked up um you are able to run a line basically for uh um artemis artemis to get uh her all uh hooked up directly to the ship that's directed uh directly connected to the station um and yeah uh by the time you get back um artemis has uh hooked everything up things have gone live um you are you get to see uh for a moment um the criteria you provided artemis um yeah. that that she is using um she has added a bunch of stuff that doesn't make sense to you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, um, I said I would trust her judgment, so right. that's what I'll do. All right. So um, you get everything hooked in. Artemis, uh, do you talk to Artemis before she starts? Um, I might just say, like, oh, I see you did, uh, refine my parameters. There's, like, a um, long, like, three-second silence. Yes. Uh, um, okay, uh, uh, what, what were you thinking, uh, when you, uh, updated them? Uh, anything you'd like to share? 
for my own edification. Long three second silence. I don't. Astro, do you have uh, anything that would allow you to like get a sense of Artemis? I don't think you have anything like, um, like uh, oh, yeah. Rhea situation or anything like that, right? So, may, the, just make me only, a pilot check. Yeah, the the only thing I guess is like my experience with my own NHP, but I think Artemis is. Unique, unique bird. Hey, a 20. Hey, oh, a 20. 20 <laughs> um, Astro, uh, you get a sense that Artemis is, doesn't, it, not that she just doesn't want to talk about it, but that something about it makes her uncomfortable, which is an odd sense that you're getting from her mm. because even though you've worked with nhps before um you you know directly have kubrick who's working with you right now artemis has shown a range you're not familiar with yeah um when i sort of pick up on that i'll i'll just say ah never mind it's it's not important. I was just curious. Uh, let's let's get on with it, shall we? Yes, I will begin your request now. Um, this may take a little while. You are more than welcome to check in. I will be monitoring pretty much nonstop once I start. Uh, do you? Uh... Do you need any help from me? Anything I can do? I don't believe so, Captain. Okay, well, uh, good luck. I'll check in later. All right. And uh, you can tell she waits until you've kind of like descended from the mech. And then you hear something start back up in the cockpit. Um, it is it is a very muted, but it is a garble of thousands of things happening at once. Audio, video, you see lights uh, kind of like shining out oddly from within the cockpit. Um, something you don't understand is probably happening right now. Yeah. I definitely um, and. Yeah, I'm in over my head when it comes to whatever Artemis is doing. So I'll just I'll just let her go unperturbed. All right. Uh, Astro, uh, for this project, I'm going to need you to make a dangerous pilot check. Mm, OK. Um, OK. Uh, could I use investigate? So, investigate might make sense if you were the one doing it. If I was the one investigating. What about lead or inspire? Okay. I am inspiring Artemis. Let's see how on board you are able to get Artemis in this situation. Okay. Uh, any accuracy difficulty? So, it is a dangerous check. I am just going to warn you that you know what? We'll just see what happens. <laughs> okay. No difficulty, no accuracy. Okay. But I can use lead or inspire? Yep. All right. Hold my breath. Oh, and that's oh. the end of my good rolls. Uh, that's a four. That is a four. So you rolled a two plus two. Um... It is not longer than six hours later, Astro, after you've left and Artemis has started her project for you, um, that you get a um, emergency ping on the comms, specifically for you, Astro. Okay. Uh, it is um, a... It's like one of those like 
report to kind of things like report to the hangar bay immediately yes okay um i will do so right uh as you rush down to the hangar bay uh you get to um where the the mechs are stored uh and you can tell um that dine's mech is disconnected like the the long line that you ran uh to the station has been pulled out the side of the mech okay interesting there's no one Um, else in the hangar uh okay um i'm gonna i'm gonna climb into uh dine's mech all right uh as you climb up to the cockpit of dine's mech and open the cockpit um you find it is heavy to open like maybe some parts of the hydraulics aren't working correctly um so with a grunt he's going to grind it open all right and as you pull it open on? um a little bit of black smoke releases out of the top of the cockpit <laughs> he waves his hand in front of his face um surprisingly though uh most of the screens do turn back on in much the same way um that you arrived before um the same screen on the side lights back up uh with the face paint and symbol you saw before um but there's something off about it it doesn't it do, it's not centered in the screen it's like yeah. off in that in the way that like you look for symmetry and it's like why you know what i mean like the resolution's off on the screen or right. something Don's gonna be mad at me I'll say, um, uh, Artemis, is everything okay? The, the, um, the symbol that Artemis projects onto the screen, like, lights up, and then, like, dims, and lights up and dims, but you don't hear any sound. Um, I'm gonna start, uh, running some diagnostics. Um, All right. How do you um, do that? Is, um, I'll just I'll just strap myself into the mech and start like opening up his computer system, um, and I know like a few things to check. Um, you know, uh, you know, CPU resources being used or overloaded, um, uh, network uh, communication, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, it looks like. Some of the systems are a little bit garbled. Um, Things are askant in here. Um, It is it is almost like what uh, you would expect from like some sort of weird crash happened or system error or like it is it is like it doesn't look like any permanent damage was done but things are messed up in a way that is hard to ascertain even from the diagnostics um it probably requires a closer look um okay. yeah um once i see that i'm gonna be like oh boy and i'll i'll step out of the mech um and find an intercom panel and say, um, hey, uh, I'll radio Dine. Say, Dine, can you report to the hangar? Uh, I think I might have broke Artemis. Dine just goes, you did what? <laughs> um, <laughs> not broke, but I think uh, maybe she needs a little rest. You just hear a slamming noise. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you? Oh boy, I'm in trouble. Probably in the med bay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what Dine. does what does Astro see when Dine arrives? A very a very kind of angry, kind of bewildered. What did you do? Uh, expression. So I, I I had Artemis run the program, like like we had discussed. Uh, uh, she added her own additional parameters, uh, but I, you know, I I told her I'd trust her. 
Um, that was six hours ago. Uh, I just got a message to report to the hangar, and I found found your mech like this. I'll point to the to the um, hardwire connection that's been disconnected. It was like this like, when I, I got here. <laughs> 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 I swear I, I didn't set it on fire. <laughs> Um, uh, I, I did a brief diagnostic. Nothing seems uh, irreversibly broken, uh, but thing, things are garbled. All right. Uh, so, Dyne's going to get up into the cockpit, and what he's going to do is disconnect Artemis from the mech, because uh-huh. she can. Um, and then he's going to try and reboot the mech and just run systems like i know astro already did it but dine wants to see for himself okay and to see if caster is still functioning properly yes you reboot mm. the system sans artemis um your mech comes back up uh caster reports back in um as caster turns on he, you hear him say like through now functioning audio circuits Oh, that went sideways pretty quickly. Um, And then, yeah, most things boot on, but there is, like, things out of place um, in, like, a weirdly arcane way, like... Like a like a document file folder structure that should be like top level folder subfolder and then a bunch of categories beneath it. It's now like what if all those category folders were just sitting on your desktop now? Kind of situation, right? It's like a bunch of things that are deeper in your computer system feel a little exploded in a way that's like not non repairable, but like weirdly annoying, like. Yeah. Why did it break this way? Like, you know what I mean? It's like a it's a huge hassle. The the things that are broken in a way that you'll be able to fix, but in a way that you're going to be fixing in a tedious way. Yeah. Asher is just like in in the background fretting and he's like, I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't think this would happen. I thought Artemis could handle it. Well, we don't know where the problem even began. Uh, the... <sighs> it must right. have been overwhelmed by the deluge of data. Even yeah, Artemis well... has her limits. <sighs> All right. Caster, begin restoring the systems to what they were before. I'll begin restoring the data once I run some diagnostics on Artemis to make sure she nothing has happened. Um. Well, uh, about that... Um... I believe we were on the verge of figuring something out when the operation was suddenly aborted at the last moment. Oh, fantastic. Uh, I'll be in the background, lean my head in and say, uh, figuring out what? I... From what I understood from Artemis is that she was on the verge of discovering something... And then I, I, she expressed some amount of worry and disconnected the connection and, well, I, I see. I believe, <sighs> I believe Artemis could have completed what she was trying to do. So I don't know what happened, Dine. Okay. In that case, for the moment, get things into working order, and I will try and see what I can get from Artemis. We'll take things one step at a time. I can attempt to start to organize things, but I will need your input on 173 discrepancies. All right. One thing at a time. Uh, Astro, get me a couple pots of coffee. I'm on it, boss. <laughs> Astro seems eager to please. <laughs> uh, and he rushes off to the um, <laughs> to the galley. <laughs> All 
All right. Uh, Dine, what do you do? <sighs> Dine will re like reinsert Artemis into the mech and begin the process to reboot her while, ca- while he uh, works with ca- caster's discrepancies. Okay. Um, Artemis comes back fairly quickly. Um, you're able to get through like 10 of caster's discrepancies uh, while Artemis boots up. Um, you see Artemis's face uh, log on to her normal screen as she comes uh, on. Uh, and then she will go, no, you dolt. I'm trying to. D- oh, dine. Yes. Hi, Artemis. <laughs> Where did the other one go? Uh, Astro? Yes. Uh, he ran to get me coffee. Ah. Uh. Dine, I have some what bad happened? news. Oh, boy. Let's... Give me the bad news. How abrupt do you want the news? Give it to me straight. I believe I've accidentally flagged Corsac as to our location. I see. I won't say it's my fault. I simply did as I was asked. That's quite the failed dangerous check. <laughs> I'll say. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. I I only followed up on most of the leads. Oh boy. To be fair, I don't know what they'll do about it or if they know exactly who we are. Do you know what data you left in their systems? Well, if I had to guess from their side, it probably looked like it probably looked like an outside hacker trying to breach some of their most secure systems. I see. They might not know it's us. We can only hope. I'm sorry, I'm laughing on my own. <laughs> oh boy. Whoops. But I Astro's gonna have a lot of people mad at him. As Astro comes back with coffee, uh <laughs> you can hear Dine talking to uh uh Artemis up in the cockpit. Artemis will say I can say with about 90% certainty I know uh, what is uh, where um, Prismalo is. Well, that's a plus. I'm being modest. I'm almost positive in the same way I was positive about that ambush. But I can't explain why I know it, so I'm hedging. All right. Um... Well, send that information to Jessica and we'll, and you and I can have a talk. Astro, Astro comes back with the coffee. He's like, oh, I think I heard, uh, I heard things are good. Uh, Artemis found, Artemis found Prismalo. So Artemis found Prismalo, but on the downside, Corsac may know we're here. Uh, well, it's great. Uh, uh, what is, wait, what What do you say? I say Corsac may know we're here. Uh, he drops his other coffee. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, at this point, Artemis pipes up and says, 
To be fair, the only reason I alerted them is because I'm pretty sure that when Prismalo flunked out of the competition, they decided to sell information to Corsac on the down low and act as their spies on the station instead. Oh, okay. I only tried well, to hack their most secure sites to confirm my suspicions, though. But that was when I was found. <laughs> okay, well, that certainly answers the question of who Prisma Lowe is working for. Uh, do... Is there any way we can uh, redirect their suspicions? <clears throat> Did they know it was us that hacked them? And they trace it back to us, I guess. While I am very good and better at most things than you, you are probably a better information specialist than I am. So that is information I do not have for you. Okay, well, uh, if you could... If you could share uh, um, the details of how you hacked into their system, maybe I can follow up on that and see how exposed we are. I believe I can. Well, let's focus on the good news. Now we know exactly what Prisma Low is up to. The one thing that I couldn't determine with certainty is who recruited Prismalo. When you were all brought in and worked in contest, you had very few people you were allowed contact with in the facilities. This supposes that there was already a Corsex spy or contact as part of contest who they would have been able to make contact with during the course of the proceedings to make a deal with. The identity of that person I have not been able to ascertain. Yeah, that's true, and especially considering how how uh, how many lengths they took to keep Corsac Corsac out of this in the first place. We can use this to our advantage, uh, as long as. Uh, as long as uh, Corsac doesn't come in with guns blazing or something. Well, we're going to find out very soon. <sighs> Astro, you work with Artemis' data. See what kind of damage. Maybe we can mitigate some of it. Yes. Please. I'll find out. As he... uh... Oh, and I'll take that coffee. He... <laughs> 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 He, he gives you the coffee that he didn't drop. <laughs> yeah. He's like, uh, oh, yeah, I better clean this up. <laughs> uh, Astro. He just landed on the hangar floor. Uh, Astro, as uh, Artemis is getting you the information uh, of, like, her reports as she was, like, working through, um, honestly, some of the most hardened systems that you know of in the entire country... Um, Artemis randomly says to you, uh, by the way, Astro, um, if you meet a man with a knife in one hand, watch the hand without the knife. Um, okay. Oh, what, what makes you say that? Just a worry. Okay, I will file that away in my brain. Glad to hear it. Todd Todd furiously makes notes. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we're at dinner, someone picks up a knife, a butter knife. Like, what's in your other hand? A gun. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this was right! <laughs> All right, so, Astro, you have info. This is not going to take a check from you. I, this will just tell you what your fail check got you. Uh, as you examine the information, um, you are able to realize 
that what seems to have happened is that Artemis, uh, as she was investigating every possible lead she could all at the same time, all at once, um, that more than a couple of threads seem to lead to um, outside interference, like yet another group interested in what's going on here. And you don't, again... Astro, this is something that like doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you because there's leaps in logic here that don't make sense. Like it's like it, it's like someone going from A to D without going through B or C, right? Like there are a lot of leaps in logic that don't make sense, and you're not sure if you could replicate them, and they'd be almost inadmissible in any kind of logical style of like debate or court or anything like that. Right. This would be like unusable as evidence, but right. Artemis remains convinced that this is still correct information. Um, so do with that what you will. Um, but she became convinced that at some point during contest, Prisma Lowe was contacted by Corsac. They flipped uh, to work as spies Stayed on E2705, went uh, like low, <laughs> like stayed undercover here and are basically pretending to be a cell of rebels that only ever does things that Corsac needs them to do. So they don't associate with any of the other cells. They only to the corporation do they ever pretend to be rebels, right? Yeah. Um. They never associate with the other rebel cells. They're kind of just using the chaos of the moment to hide and blend in. Um, yeah. This is, again, not anything that you have direct observations of having taken place, but this is what Artemis has reasoned out uh, based on the information she's using. Um, you don't know if this was just imprudence or what. It seems like a few of the functions that Artemis was running decided that in order to confirm this information to go through from the other side and see if she could track down Prisma Lo through Corsac. Yeah. Unfortunately, Corsac may be the hardest target for this kind of thing in the known universe. Um, Artemis couldn't do it. Right. And ultimately got herself caught. Um, now, you remember hearing that, like, she pulled the plug and, like, kind of did an emergency exit. Right. And that's what you see in right. this data. Unfortunately, that didn't stop basically your transponder information being linked to this. Um, if Corsac is able to ever get close enough to see your ship on sensors... They will know, hey, it's those guys who hacked us. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, your, your ship is now red flagged in Corsex system as these are people who basically committed a huge, huge, huge crime. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's just it. That's just attached to the DBC now. Okay. Um, so I know they have transponder information but that doesn't include like like our immediate location. Oh no no. Yeah, where you are right now is included. They know oh, okay. they know you're on E2705. <laughs> okay, so they know everything. Um now dude, the question becomes do you think they'll act on that? What do you think their response will be? They don't it's not like they pinpointed your exact location, but they definitely know what right, system know. you are in. They know you're in this system. And there's really only one thing in this system anyone cares about right now. Right. Because that would have been logged on where the transmission was coming from, because this transmission would have gone to the gate of this system on its way to Corsac systems. So they would have the gate address, basically. Got it. <clears throat> Okay. And that's what you're able to deduce from the uh from the logs that Artemis gives you. <laughs> I'd say, you know, that was helpful. 
in the short term. So yeah, it was, it was definitely interesting. As, as far as you're aware, um, there is another problem of Bruin now. Uh, with that, I'm going to head uh, go ahead and call this session. We'll see what you all decide to do now uh, that these other events and pieces of information has wandered into your care uh, and what your plan is going forward. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 See ya.